12. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people are kind of concerned about what's going on in the world. And uh, it's hard to believe all the demonstrations. People backing terrorists over the Jews. I don't know. Of course, depends on how old you are and things like that. But, you know, years ago I read a book about the thing called David Ben-Gurion. You know who, anybody know who David Ben-Gurion was? He's the first prime minister of Israel when they got their land back. And 24 million Arabs tried to destroy Israel then. They were outnumbered about 24 million to one. It looks like we're right back there. Then I've been read, read some prophecy here lately. One fellow said, well, you know, the Bible says we're going to have a period of peace and safety before the end time. Israel will. And some of the Bible teachers seem to think because of the Iron Dome and here for the last few years, it was fairly peaceful in Israel <laughs> until just a few weeks ago. Did all that change then? Yep. Drastic change. So that probably wasn't the answer to that, but there will be a period. And uh, of course, we're gonna have a lot to go through. God's not done with Israel yet. And so look at Genesis chapter 12, and uh, we will read a few verses here. This fellow named uh, Blanken, Blanken, I think, is, uh, you know, he's, uh, is he Secretary of Defense? He used to be what Hillary was? Clinton? Of state. Of state. He's starting to blank. He's uh, softened up how we should back Israel or not. America better back Israel. That's right. And here's where the text for it. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. That's where the Jews are living now, but they just got a little piece of it. It's going to be a whole lot bigger in the future. That's right. And Israel will get it all back. Well, they're talking about this two-state thing. Well, it's kind of hard to live with a two-state deal when terrorists are chopping your baby's heads off, raping the women. It's amazing these college students, of course, they've been brainwashed. It's exactly what's going on. Of course, thankfully, I didn't. Of course, I'm ashamed of the school I went to. They don't have any standards like they did when I went there. I'm not talking about the state college. I'm talking about the Bible college I went to. But anyway, the uh, Lord tells Abraham, says, leave where you're at. He was down in Nanner, probably where they worship the moon god. And God talked to him somehow. He didn't have a good King James Bible like I have. <coughs> But apparently God got the message through to him and said, get up and go where I tell you to go. I'm going to give you a land. And Abraham would be equivalent to our George Washington, the father of their nation. That's right. And George Washington's the father of our nation. Isn't it awful the way they are attacking our founders? Tearing down statues and all these things that are going on in the news. And I'm sure some of this stuff bothers people, makes you nervous. But if you're a Christian, it shouldn't make you nervous. You know where you're going to end up, don't you? And you think the Lord can take care of you until then? Well, He's taken care of me for 77 years. Amen. March will be 78. Carol says, I can't believe when she turns 70, she says, I can't believe I'm 70. Well, if the Lord lets me live that long, sometimes I wonder why, you know, I'm still around, but... Apparently, God's got some purpose. Because right. I'm here. And I'm still trying to keep going. And it's not getting any easier from a physical standpoint. But verse 2, he says, And I will make of thee a great nation. Somebody says, well, What do you mean a great nation? 
it's uh, our whole country is not as big as Indiana. And that's right. <coughs> and their population. I was shocked and amazed. And they come out on news said there was only nine million Jews in Israel. We got more Jews in in America than that. I think we got 12 or 13 million here. Mm -hmm. And then they're spread all over the world. But one of these days they're going to come back. Amen. And they're not going to all fit in that little sliver of ground they have right now. God's going to give them the whole land that He promised Abraham here. Verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be blessed. Be a blessing. Well, even the Arabic people recognize Abraham. The Christians recognize him. The Jews recognize him. And claim him. And so, I think this is true prophecy here, don't you? It's in the Bible, isn't it? Then verse 3, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them, curse him that curseth thee, and thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Whose side do you think America ought to be on? God's side. Amen. God's side, that's right. That'd be Israel. That's right. According to the Bible here. And uh, now how is the whole world blessed through Israel? Jesus. Amen. Right there is one of them. Where'd you get that from? That's right. The Jews. You know what the Old Testament is? Jewish history book. Exactly what it is. That's right. A Jewish history book. And God knew a lot about their history because he didn't, I read those genealogies and he lists them all name by name. But he knows how many hairs you got on your head. I, I think he hears your heart beating. I think he even hears... Noah's heartbeat Amen. inside his mother. You believe that? I believe that. And, uh, but I think we need to take a stronger stand but back in Israel. Israel, this isn't the first time they've tried to destroy Israel. Several times. Look what happened at the Holocaust. What, six million of them died? Took the guns away from them. Few of them had some guns. I think it was, uh, what country? It was in one of the <coughs> countries, satellite countries of the communist over there. And uh, they had some apartments and they got in a big fight over that. But the Jews finally lost. Of course, it's kind of hard to stand up, you know. And they'd like to take all the guns away from all the Americans, too. Right. They keep talking about it. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. No. And if you, you can pass all the laws you want, if somebody wants a gun, they'll get one. There's too many floating around out there. Now, Carol, i got to be careful. I'll go off on my rabbit trails here. So you got to keep me... And so I read those first three verses. Did I establish the fact that we ought to back Israel? Take a stand. Now, I don't know. Of course, I haven't seen any anti-Israel demonstrations here in Noblesville. I did see them over the abortion thing. They were all the way across through town. And if that happens, I'm liable to go out there and Give me a Jewish flag and hold it up. Somebody says, well, you shouldn't do that. Well, why not? Well, they'd like for you as a Christian to go over here and sit down and don't say anything. Right. They don't want you telling anybody about Jesus. Somebody might get saved. wonder who'd be behind you not telling anybody about Jesus. think the devil might be behind that. Well... Uh, really what I'm going to talk about this morning, what will happen at the rapture? It's going to happen when the rapture takes place. And uh, 
Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Well, space travel new? Did it just start with NASA? Huh? Or did some people in the Old Testament travel through space? Did, he, did, did Enoch travel through space? Went right up to heaven. Not only the not the first heaven or the second heaven, I think he made it to the third heaven. Right. <coughs> huh? Not just where the birds fly and the planets are, he made it to where God was. Amen. That's the third heaven. Of course, some people talk about the seventh heaven. I don't know about that. I never found that in the Bible. I did find the third heaven, though, in Corinthians, Paul talks about it. And uh, so a trip into outer space is not a new thing to the 20th century. Enoch walked with God and was not found, for God took him. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, says Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Did he just take him on to heaven without dying? Now what happened or not? Think I could do it again? Huh? Enoch took a trip into outer space. Enoch uh, walked with God and God said, Enoch, uh, uh, why don't you just go home with me? And so Enoch did. He went home with God, didn't he? You going to go home with God one of these days? Hey, huh? And Elijah took a trip. And so on this yeah. one, I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah took a trip into space. Only he had something to go with. He had a fiery chariot. Huh? Well, we sent some astronauts up there. Well, the Russian astronauts got up there and guess what they said? We don't see God. But when the American astronauts got up there, they talked about God. Well, you know why the Russians probably didn't see God? Because they weren't looking for God. That's why a lot of people are not seeing God today. They're not looking for God. Most of the people in America are looking for entertainment, pleasure. Huh? Isn't that what they look for? And that when they try to pick a church, that's what they try to pick. Right? You gotta have entertainment. We need to have some smoke and the strobe lights and <laughs> drums and huh? Wouldn't that be better? Or would it be better just to open the Bible up and want God to send the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts about the Bible? And so now we're in 2 Kings chapter 2. You probably found it by now. Look at verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. It came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven. Is he going to go up into heaven? Is that space? Huh? I think it'd be space. And it came, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. And Elijah went with Elisha to Gilgal. Well, you got the pastor and his assistant here, right? And uh, so Elisha went with Elijah, and Elisha, Elijah, one with the J. There's a J and an S here. Just kind of confusing. Then go down to verse 9. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 9, and it says, And it came to pass when they were gone over uh, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let me, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he does, he gets a double portion. Elijah keeps telling him, well, wait here. And Elisha keeps saying, nope. I've got to see you when you're going up. So I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to follow you around. And he keeps following him around. Now go down to verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on. So Elijah and Elisha are going on. They're together. And he says, if you're going to see me when I go up, I'm going to get a double portion. Matter of fact, Elijah only brought one back from the dead. Elisha brought two. That's right. That's a double portion, isn't it? And not only that, in a lot of other ways, too. 
But I'll just give you that as a, an example. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by the whirlwind into heaven. Did he or didn't he? Now if you were Elisha, you are standing there watching him. And he threw his mantle down and Elisha gets it and he goes over and he hits the river and it just splits. And you'll have to read all this, but it's in there. Y'all check me out. Well, you got this next week. You can check me out, right? Then if I'm wrong, you come back next Sunday and say, Preacher, you didn't have that right. Uh -huh. But I don't think you'll be able to do that. Because guess where I got it? The Bible. Got it right out of the Bible. Amen. I don't know what else to preach. Somebody says, well, I don't know. You're preaching current events and the news. But only how it relates to the Bible. That's right. Prophecy. And I think prophecy is real. And so you've got, did Enoch go up? Did Elisha go up? One had just no vehicle. The other one had a fiery chariot. Boy, that fiery chariot thing, that's what we'd like today. If we're going to put it in the movie, that's what we'd like. <laughs> and they're right or not. We're going to make it big and... Same thing with churches. I got to go to a big fancy church where they got strobe lights and smoke. And I mean, is this really a church? Where two or three gather together in my name? I told Carol that's not really completely so. It is to a point. But if when one person, one Christian's there, God's there. That's right. Let alone two or three. But you get two or three together, they can get a lot done. Man. Three can do more than one. They could, together we could get more done than if it's just one <coughs> person here or two or three or four or five. We need to be praying that the Lord will double our size of our church. Amen. That's about what we can hold in this building. We're running between 15 to 20. You got to start praying for 30 to 40. That'd be about double, right? And if you get that many in here, there won't be any empty pews, hardly. Then if we get to that point, we can go to something bigger. Amen. We need to have a goal. I was trying to get to 20. We, we never have so far gotten to what we just averaged 20. We hit 20, we've got a potential of a little over 20. But in order to have 20, you gotta have about 30 potential probably. Because, see, there's some not here this morning. Brad's not here. Anybody else that's not here? Becky's not here. Uh, Jake's not here. I can give you some more names if you want them, but those are the ones that would, would be more faithful in their coming. Right or wrong? You ought to pray for them. Might be they got messed up on the time. Might be they're sick. We don't know. Do we? And as you get older, sometimes it's just hard to get here. Can anybody here relate to that? Relate to that? Well, the younger ones probably can't much, but the older ones can. Then Jesus uh, uh, took a trip out to outer space, and somebody says, well, what are we going to read about that? Well, I think if I were you, I would check out uh, Acts chapter 1, wow. verses 10 and 11. Did Jesus take his trip out into outer space? Well, remember he came down here and lived for 33 years. He died and he was buried and he rose from the dead. And then after so many days, he goes back to heaven. But when he was going back to heaven, guess what he told us? He said, I'm coming back again. Is a second coming a basic doctrine in the Bible? Is Jesus coming again? Yes. Are you looking for him? Yes. If he's coming again and you're a Christian, then if you're looking for him, don't you think you ought to live like it? That's right. That's smart. Okay, Acts chapter. Uh, what did I tell you? I got it written down here. I got that one. 
chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 says and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel I think two angels are standing there watching Jesus go up but I don't think they were the only ones I think there was a crowd watching him go up but the angels are talking here angels are messengers Preachers are messengers too. Christians are messengers. Have you got a message from God for anybody? Yes, Can you tell them how to get over to heaven if they would trust Jesus? Can you get? Can you quote John three sixteen? For God so loved the world that gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have. <laughs> That's what they used at the altar when I got saved. I was probably about 11, 12 years old. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? So see, it wasn't just those two watching. Why are you people standing here looking? Well, I think I'd watch if I saw if Jesus was going up. Don't you think you'd watch him go up? I'm watching for him to come back. Yeah, uh, are you watching for him to come back? <coughs> Then he goes on and says, Which also said, Oh, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. <coughs> he went up in a body, and that body had nail prints in his hands, and he had a scar in his side. And when he comes back, I think we'll see that. And you go to Zechariah, you can find some verses for the sake of time. I'm not going to go to it. 13th and 14th chapter. And the Jews will see him coming back and say, what are those scars in your hands? And he says, I got them in the house of my friends. Jews have anything to do with him being nailed on the cross? They said, let his blood be on us and our children. Well, has it been? Many Jews died. They've been through a lot. They're going to go through a lot more. Just this thing here recently is nothing compared to what's coming. Why is God let them, going to have them go through all that? He's going to try to turn them back to himself. He offered them a kingdom. They rejected it. He's not done with them. They might be... Some of them have been done with him, and he's not done with them. Some people in churches got to think God's done with Israel. God's not done with Israel. Go over and read the book of Revelation. 144,000 witnesses. They're not Jehovah's Witnesses. Like up the street here, they're 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Amen. And they go out witnessing all over the world. You talk about missionaries. There's just some missionaries. Well, I can't get into all that too much. Let's move on. But you know, some people have set dates. And they say, well, now, he, he, he was going to come back on a certain date, and he didn't come back that date. The Bible says you shouldn't be setting dates. You just got to keep looking and waiting and knowing he's coming. But some have set dates and he didn't show up physically in a body at the time. They, well, he came in spirit. It said he's going to come back in like manner as he went up. That's it. Very clear. Let's go with what the Bible says, not what some cult says. Amen. Somebody says, Preacher, you're just a smart aleck. I think I'm a troublemaker. I don't know about a smart aleck. I think I cause trouble for people. Manny said we all as Christians cause trouble for people. Whenever you try to witness to them, they think you're causing them trouble. Whenever you live right and they think they feel uh, they look bad not living right because you're living right, you're causing them trouble. Yes or no? I'm not hearing any amens. I'm not even seeing any bobbleheads this morning. <laughs> At least give me the bobblehead. 
I'm not even saying that. You guys stay up too late last night? You're, you're tired? Didn't have your coffee this morning? Well, Matthew 24, 44, Jesus said, In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Well, most people in the world aren't looking for it. I am. But if you're a Christian and you're really saved, trying to live right, you're looking forward to him coming. Amen. I'm looking forward to him coming. Because when he comes, he's going to catch me up. Amen. Then in Matthew 24, 36 says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Amen. Well, some people say, well, here Jesus is saying that, and he's standing there in the body. He's a man. But apparently he gave that up while he was here in the world. You know, God works miracles on himself. Yes. Somebody says, what kind of miracle could God work on himself? He forgets your sins if you pray and ask him to forgive you. That's a big one. That's a miracle. Well, the... You're probably your family and friends. They don't forget your sins. <laughs> you start trying to witness to them. They'll say, well, what about when you used to do this and you used to do that? They, uh, one guy said his wife would go his, his, uh, historical on him. And they said, what do you mean hysterical? He said, no, historical. Every time she gets mad at me, she brings up all the past things that I did wrong. <clears throat> but she might do it hysterically, too. Might be a combination. Elijah had a, a vehicle when he traveled went up into heaven. Enoch didn't have a vehicle. Jesus didn't. He just went up. Right. And uh, somebody says, well, who would we read about all this going up stuff? The word rapture is not in the Bible. Right. And it's not. But the idea of going up into heaven is. Amen. When I worked in the foundry down in Missouri, when I was going through Bible college, uh, they had a big uh, crane, and the crane had an electric magnet on it. And the train would come by, have all this metal in it, and that crane would go out, and they'd put power to that magnet, and that magnet would pick up the metal. Then they could swing over and drop it in the furnace, and then meld it down, and we could pour things out of it, metal. God's got a big magnet. I think it might be the Holy Spirit. Huh? <coughs> Can the Holy Spirit draw you? Huh? Has He drawn you? Well, you read the Word of God and the Holy Spirit makes it real in your heart. That's how He picks you up. Now, He won't pick up anything that's not metal or not good. He won't pick up the junk. He'll pick up the people that are His. The saved people. Amen. But, you know, there's some people not saved. I sure, they're really good people. I'd sure like to see them get saved. Wouldn't you? It'd be awful for good people to die and go to hell. And somebody says, why does God send people to hell? He doesn't. He doesn't send his children to hell. They decide they want to go there. That's right. He doesn't make them go there. He gave them a way to go to heaven. But you know, we're talking about this uh, going up. Uh, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And go down to verse 13. And this is the passage that we always use. And if nothing, if you don't want to mark your Bible, if you got a Bible that's really nice and fancy, and you don't want to mark it up, and make a note. But or you can get an old one like I got. Now this one's not marked up. I, I just started using it. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. Now Paul started this church at Thessalonica, and he told them about the second coming and taught them about it. Then he left, and after he left, somebody come back and started to say, well, you missed the rapture. You missed the rapture. Now, then, it could have been through a letter. It could have been through somebody preaching or teaching. It doesn't really <coughs> say too much about that. I think I'm going to have to get a drink. 
sorry about that. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Now he's talking to Christians, your brethren, right? Are you brothers and sisters in the Lord? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Do you have any loved ones that have already died? Yes. They're the ones that are asleep. Carol and I don't have any parents on either side, no grandparents on either side left. I don't even have a brother or sister left. I have one brother and he's gone on. Carol still has a sister, it's what, three, two sisters and a brother. Still alive. She has a brother we didn't think he'd ever get saved, but I believe he has. He's Amen. singing in the choir in the Methodist church now. When Carol would try to give him tracks, he'd wad them up and throw them away. God can get through when we can't. Huh? Anyway, he's, he's talking here. He says, I don't want you to be worrying about your loved ones that have already died. If they're saved, they're in heaven. That's right. Their soul and spirit's in heaven. Now, their body might be in the ground. One of these days, the body will come up. Let's read a little farther and we'll see that. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, their soul and spirit's already gone to heaven, but one day the bodies will come up out of the grave and the soul and spirit will go back into the body. That's, that's what it means when it tells Christians says you'll never die. Doesn't mean your body won't die, but the immaterial part of you won't die. The soul's the real you. The body's just the house you live in for a while. But you're going to get a better body. Amen. A glorified body. Jesus, I think, could walk right through a wall. I don't know how it will travel. It'd be nice to say, well, I wish I was down at my house and I'd just be there. I don't know how all that will We'll find out, though, if we're saved. Now, when I get to about verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, <coughs> that we which are alive and remain, well, that'd be us so far. I'm still alive. My mom and dad are dead. My brother's dead. I believe they're in heaven. One day I'm going to get back together with them. Amen. So he says, for this, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive remain unto the coming of the Lord, that this be to the rapture when he comes and takes all the saved people up, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh, my, mom, my mom and dad and brother are in the grave. Uh, they're six foot down there or so. Uh, I'm on the ground. I'm not going to go ahead of them. We're going to go up together. Not, I don't have a head start on them, even though I'm six foot closer, or whatever. But he's talking in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The ones in the graves come out first, because they got to come up six foot to get up to us. Does that make any sense? Uh, and then we just go up together. Is one Christian above another Christian? No. no. I think America might have been founded on some of that. We're all created equal. equal. But I don't know. Are there any poor people in our country? Are there any rich people? But as far as God sees you, you're equal. Amen. You don't put the rich guy in the front pew and the poor guy in the back when they come into church. Uh, and it doesn't matter what color they are, That's right. what nationality they are, Amen. God just loves them all. <clears throat> now, I think I was reading in verse 16, wasn't I? It says, The trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Together? With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Are we going in space traveling? 
We're going to go up where God's going to be. Then we're going to live up there with Him for seven years while the tribulation goes on down here on the earth. And God's going to work on the Jews and the people that are left down here. And the ones that haven't heard how to get saved can get saved. And there'll be a multitude of them. There'll be 144,000 Jewish missionaries and a couple of prophets that will witness to these people. And there'll be people from every kindred and tongue and nation get saved. And there are verses in the Bible that say just about what I said. I didn't quote it word for word, but that's what it teaches. <clears throat> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the uh, Lord. I like that. Going to ever be with the Lord, my loved ones. Amen. Yes or no? Yeah. I think back now when we used to make ice cream and We'd go down the Ohio River and get fish and cook it. And my grandfather would pick the bones out for Carol. I think, man, I like those days. You know, normal maybe he's never coming back, but Jesus is. Amen. I miss the America I grew up in. Yeah. Those are some good quotes that I've stole from somebody. But they're good, aren't they? If you're as old as I am, or I don't know. Was America different in the past? Yeah. Sure it was. Were we more religious in the past? Did we yes. go to more people go to church? It's hard to get people even to go to church, even though they say they're Christians today. Yeah. Like I said, you got all those license plates in God we trust and the parking lot ought to be full because there's all kinds of those plates floating around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get anything out of that? Huh? I want you to get something this morning. Hopefully you've gotten something already. Come and dine. The Master calleth. Come and dine. Now, I... I don't really usually probably get into steak, but at least I can get you mashed potatoes and gravy and a hamburger or something. Huh? Of course, it's, you don't know what's steak to some people. Right. That's good. Don't know that. I just put what God's Word out here and see what happens with it. Now, I have some points to this. My first point is we receive... He receives us. Mm -hmm. Is He going to come? We're going to go up and He's going to receive us into heaven? Yes. And so I think that that point's made there. And I talked about the foundry and the magnet pulling us all up. Is God going to pull us all up? Mm -hmm. The wheat and tares are growing together and we're not supposed to try to separate them. It's hard in this day and age to tell who's a Christian yes. and who's the world. True. Because most Christians are acting like the world. We need some Christians that lack like Christians, not like the world. Amen. Now don't get mad at me, but I'm just telling you the truth. You can get mad at me all you want. Don't get mad at God. Are there people mad at God? Yes. God gets a lot of blame. I should quit right now. And I've only given you one point. far as time. My second point would be, let's see, I got one here. He comes to reawaken the dead in Christ. Amen. Will the ones in the graves come out or not? Will He reawaken them? Will they be caught up and will be caught up with them? And so, uh, that would be verse 16 that we just read. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. first. Will He awaken the dead? The Bible says He will. And then uh, my third point, He comes to reunite us. Will we go up together? Do we read we're going up together? Are we going to be reunited? I'm going to get to see some people. I'm going to get to see. I can <coughs> stand up here and look and tell you who 
this tie I've got on, guy that would usually sit right behind Brother Matt in that next pew gave me this tie, I believe. I believe he's in heaven. Jerry Fugate used to sit back in there. I believe she's in heaven. She died from ovarian cancer. Now I can go on and on. Somebody says, nothing's happened at Bible Baptist Church. If one soul gets saved, it's worth the whole world. And I can tell you a bunch that... I, I, I was looking at pictures this last week, Marta getting baptized. Marta, Marta was mentally challenged, but I believe she's not in, now. She's in heaven. Amen. Wow. Some of you don't know any of those people, so I'll just leave that alone. But He comes and He reunites us. Uh, he comes to redeem us. So I says, I thought I got redeemed when I got saved. Well, your soul and spirit did, but not your body. There it is. Your body's not redeemed. Somebody says, what do you mean my body's not redeemed? You got any aches and pains? <laughs> you grown any? Got any physical problems? Then your body's not completely redeemed yet. God paid the price, but you haven't got the new body. He gave you some earnest down payment to prove. He gave you the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to go up to heaven. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit back. And that's going to be your helper. Somebody says, now who are we going to go to find this preacher? Well, I got some verses here. Let's see which one do I need. Got a lot to say and I don't... Uh, I, well, I don't want to get to that yet, but maybe... It's awful not to, I don't want to keep you too long. I've already kept you a long time. There's uh, several things I want to get, but we'll go to Romans 8 for right now. Romans chapter 8. This is a great chapter in the Bible. One of the great chapters in the Bible. Uh, Martin Luther said it ought to be on parchment of gold and written in diamonds. That'd be pretty valuable, wouldn't it? Parchment of gold, written in diamonds. And somebody says, well, why do you think this is such a great chapter? Well, we'll read a little bit of it and see. And uh, I think you'll maybe agree. I hope you'll agree with me. But uh, you can put me some markers in here so I get to this stuff fast. Romans chapter 8, go down to verse 14. Romans chapter 8, go to verse 14. And it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you a child of God? Amen. Amen. Did the Holy Spirit work in your heart and you got yes. saved? Then you're a child of God. The devil will come along and he'll try to take that away from you. Let's read a little more. Verse 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby ye cry, Abba, Father. Is God your Father? Yes. Now, yes. the devil's most people's father in the world. Right. John 8, 44. I'm not going to read it. Yep. says, Ye are of your father the devil. Talking to Jewish religious leaders. Verse 16, The Spirit itself beareth with witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Has the Holy Spirit worked in your heart and you know you're saved? Well, that's what it's just said right there. Just go by what the Bible says. Sometimes we just slide over this stuff. Don't we? And it jumps off. At, sometimes it'll <laughs> jump off at you when you need it the most. It's the living Word of God. Verse 17. And of children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs? Does Jesus own anything? Everything. Well, you're a joint heir. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. He says, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that 
we suffer with him that we may uh, be also glorified together. We might have to suffer some in this life, but it's going to get better. You never, it's always going to, get, God's going to make it better for you. Get through this and it'll get better. Even some of the things we're going through makes us better. Makes you stronger. You know, your muscles will get weak if you don't use them. They call it an, an, anthro, an, anthropy or yeah. atrophy. atrophy. you got to use them. Spiritual muscles too. Verse 18, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. How good is it going to get? We don't even know. What's the best you've ever had in this life? That's nothing compared to what you're going to have. That's right. That's a good way. No, that's my Greek and Hebrew. That's my <laughs> Greek uh, interpretation. Right out of the King James. Verse 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you have an expectation it's going to get better? I think everybody in this world wants it to get better. There's something deep down in them, you think it, there's something better than this. And if you're a Christian, there is. If you're a lost person, there's something a whole lot worse than this. Now, that, I, I hate to have to say it, but that's what the Bible teaches. I have no choice. I have no choice. Some people won't want to hear that. But if they keep not hearing it, what's going to happen? I won't even say, you know. I don't have to say. Somebody says, well, what can we do about that? Pray for people. Amen. Live in a way that we encourage them to get saved. Don't just preach to them all the time. Live it. That's the best preaching you can do. Talk's cheap. Action speaks a lot louder than words. Go to church. Read your Bible. Pray. Don't act like the world. Act like God wants you to act. Now let's see. I was down here about verse 19. Is that right? Now he says the earnest expectation. You know when you go to buy a house, they want you to put some earnest money down. You ever go buy a, want to go buy a car? You go in that uh, used car lot, and they said, well, uh, there's been 10 people look at this car, and if you give me $20 or a deposit, I'll hold it for you. I know one guy who did that. He, he reached in his pocket and got a bunch of change in <laughs> my, my dad always said, you know how you can tell when a used car dealer's lying? When he opens his mouth. I'm sorry to say, I think he's almost getting that way with politicians. Maybe some preachers. Now I'm really being mean. For, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Are we waiting for it to happen? I'm going up. I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm anticipating. Are you anticipating? Well, sometimes we get our nose in the TV or a movie or our telephone. We don't know there's anything else in the world. I feel lonesome sometimes because I'll be sitting with a group of people everybody's got their phone. <laughs> or they're talking. And I think they're talking to me and they're talking to somebody on the phone. Got an earpiece in or something. One of these days everybody's going to be born with a one on that in their head. Okay. Verse 24, the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of, of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Who's rejected the same in hope? Devil doesn't want you getting saved. Lost people don't want you getting saved. 
They reject all that. And if you get saved, they're probably going to reject you. Because the cre a creature in se uh, itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the ch uh, child children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together <laughs> unto now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of the what's the next word? Body. Is your body redeemed? But it will be. Amen. Huh? Isn't this an amazing book? Oh yeah. Huh? Places. You mean somebody as dumb as you are can understand that? I can't, but God can help me to understand it. I've got a, the best teacher there ever was. That's right. not the preacher. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. For we are, are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? One of these days I'm going to be in heaven. I'm not going to be hoping for it. Right now I'm hoping for it. I believe it. I'm planning on going there. One day I won't have to hope I'll be there. Isn't this good stuff? See why I said this is a great chapter? And I could go on and on, but I'm going to quit. I, I, had, <coughs> I have some stuff in Thessalonians I want to give you, but I'm not going to take the time this morning. I'll probably work it in sometime, someplace. But somebody says, how do we know that we didn't miss the rapture? Well, I've got a place we can go to find all that. I'm not going to get to it this morning. i give you the chapter. I think it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Maybe next week I'll just go through that chapter. Then we get, I'll be real short. Huh? Anybody believe that? No. No. <laughs> I, get, I get caught up in it. I can't help it. And sometimes the devil gets me and think, yeah, I just quit preaching. But I couldn't stand it. Right. I couldn't stand not to. I keep saying I ought to retire. I've been retired for how long now, Carol? Since about 2010, 11? I put 40 some years into Coca Cola, third shift, and preached all that time. Somebody thinks, well, this church just dropped out of the sky. I put a lot of time in this place. Poured my life out in it. Drink offering. Because you know what happens when you pour liquid on a fire? It goes up in steam. But if we get enough steam engines working together, we have some power. Right. You're going to pour your life out for the Lord? Let's all stand. I guess I'll... Uh,